Hey there, you're tuned in to the Lost in Space After Show. We are talking about the fourth episode of the second season, Scarecrow. Stay tuned. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Lost in Space After Show here on After Buzz TV. Yeah. Episode three, episode four, episode four, Scarecrow, Scarecrow. I got so scared Scared. of the episode, I had to go back in time to Echoes. It was like an echo of the last one. Look at I that. I feel that. Always <laughs> <laughs> making those connections. Wow. But yeah, season two, episode four, Scarecrow. I'm your host, Elena Jordan, and joining me today, James Maple Hello in the house. Hello there, friends. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. I'm your space guy. I got a space tattoo. No I like it. Hey, oh, that's yeah. Space tattoo. <laughs> that's my thing. Now. I mean, I I would say when you have branded your body with a constellation, that you can say space doing. is your thing. Literally. Don't say that's, true. So, yeah. that's fair. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Gates, hey guys, holding it down. I don't have a space tattoo, but I have a mountain tattoo. If that counts for anything. Hey, I have no tattoos, but well, I have a Mountain Dew. So does that count? Yeah. Uh, hey. No. We're all connected. I don't we even are. have a Mountain Dew. I lied. I have nothing. Oh, damn. <laughs> but I have everything in my heart, though. Oh. Yeah. I love that that was so sentimental because this was probably the sweetest episode yeah, that was. we've seen it this was. season, too. And be sure to stick around because we'll be talking about the whole thing as well as giving our little mini predictions of what might be coming up. Mm-hmm. And we have a special segment that we call Captain or Space Waste where we give our MVP award and our <laughs> award to uh, <laughs> our who we think were the best and the oh, the worst most diabolical characters yeah, of yeah. the episode. But overall thoughts of this episode, what you guys think? I thought this was so great. We finally got Will talking to a robot mm-hmm. again. Like it's been a hot minute. He's missed it. I've missed watching it. Yeah. Um, and then we get more of that Dr. Smith trying to get into Penny's head, which mm-hmm. is awful, but I find it so fascinating. Yeah, it is. Um, I thought this was a really good one. And we finally get to see a new planet that's yes. so different from the one that we started the season on. I piggyback yeah. that. I, I'm just happy we are getting to see a new planet and moreover, new characters. And, you know, we've been rocking with these same characters roughly for the past uh, three episodes. So it's nice to have a new, some new energy, some new opinions. And uh, in this episode, I feel like a lot of people were kind of put in their place because they have a new mm. work dynamic. Yeah. We'll get into that later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. I love all the new people. I love yeah. the new topography. It rocks. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Literally, there's lots of rocks. It's, it's just rocks rocky. desert <laughs> everywhere. It's like a geologist's dream. Yeah. So, yay, Will. Yeah, Will. Wilson is in <laughs> heaven right now. <laughs> he is all about it. Uh, but yeah, we do have kind of this interesting dynamic where we have people who have been kind of run on the game yeah. now put in different situations. <clears throat> Primarily our three that are going down to this planet, right. Judy, Dawn, and John. Uh, Judy being, I know, I'm like, Dawn and John, you could have picked two <laughs> different names. It's fine. I'll let it go. But whatever. Uh, it bothers me that there's only like two men and they, their names rhyme, me but it's too. fine. It bothers me too. <laughs> but Judy is very bothered this episode nah. because she's been, I mean, saving everyone's life. She is their go to doctor. Right. And now she's been reduced to the like, band aid dispenser lady. Yeah. So, what did you guys think about this of her being kind of pushed to the side and then ultimately, of course, there being a big catastrophe, this breakdown of the well? that leads to somebody being injured and her having to swoop in to save the day. I think it's kind of interesting to see her have to start kind of at the bottom again because she has become, within her family, like, oh, she's the doctor. Like, Mm -hmm. we have to listen to Mm -hmm. her about all the medical things. And, I mean, she's obviously proven herself to be a very good doctor, but it's kind of interesting to see this new struggle for her because, I mean, last season it was, um, she was struggling with the fact that she was, like, caught under the ice for so long. Mm -hmm. And so this is, like, a a less, like, you know, (laughs) life-threatening, you know, challenge, but it's a new one nonetheless, which I think is kind of interesting to see how she's gonna sort of adapt to having to be at the bottom of the food chain again it's yeah, a mental I, obstacle yeah I, I agree it's it's just interesting because like i said a moment ago because they're in such close quarters that you know there's there your role is your role and like there's really no one to to, to question you or or anything like that but now there's you know a bunch of new people who have 
genuine profession professions and could you know in, offer better insight. So them having to be like, oh crap, yeah, I guess I want to have to take some authority right now. Now I'm gonna have to take this L and shut up and do what I'm told. So that was a that was a new dynamic, and I think it added another layer to the dimensions of the characters mm-hmm. that we've encountered so far. And I like the way that Judy handled it. I yeah. think that it like was a good reflection of her character because she wasn't like, well. <laughs> Oh, I'm not gonna do it then. Yeah. She was just like, All right, All right. I guess I'm getting this car. Oh, cool, Dad's coming. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll explain to him. Like, <laughs> nope, not helping anyone. Just get in the car and let's not talk. Okay. Is someone heard of the well? No. No, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> but not yet. Not yet. No. Dun, dun, dun. Um, but yeah, the whole reason that they're going down there is because they have to get this water from the well, and it's blocked for some reason. And we find out that it's because of this weird space rust that we first see Don encounter right. when he is um, going back to he is not welcomed with open arms he's punched right in the face for being a deserter yeah. uh, which fair um, but he's like okay we shouldn't be taking this vehicle because there's something wrong with it but I can't figure out what it is so we, we shouldn't do it um, turns out they're like well don't really care what you have to say, man who deserted us and has been gone for quite some time. Do your job. Shut your mouth. Mm-hmm. So they load up the water, and then they find out when John is sent down, of course, he is the man who mm-hmm. is sent down into the actual trenches um, to restore it, that there's this weird mi- m- like microorganism that yeah. is it can dissolve titanium. And Judy sees it uh, with the wedding ring mm-hmm. and how right. it can dissolve titanium. Right. Which also, this makes me nervous because what is our robot made out of? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Is he titanium? I would presume so. Is this a robot eating fungus that we are on this planet that he's been avoiding? Because this makes me very nervous for our robot. That's yeah. a good point. I don't know. Yeah. I very don't know. I'm nuts nervous. and bolts and titanium, perhaps? Maybe. I don't know. I hope he's okay. No. I love that bot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, of course... John is stuck down there yeah. and is then having to find some way out because his little snap line doesn't snap. Yeah. Of course Go not. figure, yeah. go figure. He's the worst luck. I know. And, but what did you guys think of this, though, where it's like, okay, they've already established they have other doctors, so, Judy, why do you have to be the one to go take this guy back? Like, yeah. You I know? Like, I was like, like, this is your dad who's stuck down here, and so if they've already been like, we don't need you as a doctor, why are you leaving your dad to go show off your doctor skills? I don't know. Yeah. And that that the way that that was set up just kind of bristled me a little bit cuz I was like you're just going to leave your dad in a well? Yeah. yeah. I'd be freaking out. Yeah. Maybe be like what goes, the well? Maybe the, <laughs> what the well? <laughs> maybe that goes to the whole power dynamic. Maybe she felt the need to prove herself again to this new these this new staff that she's working for. Yeah, I guess. possible. I mean, and yeah. I guess they're also always used to somebody being in peril where the other one yeah. has to keep doing their job. That's yeah. always been the case. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting to see all three of them down here, and then Don ultimately being the savior of yeah. the day and waving down the ship and saying, you know, no, it's got this crazy funky disease, yeah. so don't send it up. I did. I loved that. It felt very Star Wars it to did. me. Like it did. I really, really. He feels very Poe Dameron to me. He like does. every time Don does stuff, I'm like, I'm here for you, Don. Yeah. Like I know you have a chicken, but you could switch it out with a pork, and I'd be fine. <laughs> 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 um, but back up on the uh, the big spaceship here, the main reason that they're getting this water and everything is because Maureen is able to put the ship theoretically back together using right. the piece of the SAR that they have the engine to replace the engine that the other aliens came and took out. Right. Um, and they also explain how the Resolute came to be, that they built the whole thing around this alien spacecraft and the actual Christmas star from years prior mm-hmm. was the spaceship. And, you know, they explain all of this and say, we want to tell your son. She, rightfully so, was like, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but what are you gonna do? You can't keep a boy from his bots. Yeah, it's so true. Especially can't not do this it. Boy. Especially this boy, yeah. this very special boy who seems to have an older admirer, which was weird. That I was like, wait a minute, why is this little girl your roommate? And this little girl, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, wait, they're roommates? Yeah. Oh my god, what? They're roommates? <laughs> no, yeah. he's like a celebrity on the show. I, I know. Mean, but all I the moms like, are like, oh, like, he can talk to him. robots. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Everyone's like, wants I'm to gonna talk hook up my little twelve year old with a twelve year old that talks to. 
yeah. box. And I'm like, like the, what? The ladies who lunch were like, oh, that's the one right there. That's why I was like, he props to Penny because yeah. Penny was like, he's 12. Yeah. Like, Chill, y'all bro. gotta calm down. Chill, this is a bro. little boy who likes his box. <laughs> like, I kind of loved seeing Maureen with other moms, though. To be yeah. honest, because she kind of fits, but she, like she kind of doesn't. Fit. Yeah. yeah. I like it a lot. Like, mm-hmm. that was a really fun dynamic. And seeing how distracted she was by looking at the Jupiter and her and Will having the same connection of they're just curious right. of, to what's yeah. happening on their home because that was their home for yeah. almost a year. Mm-hmm. Like, that was their everything. And with everything being so heightened at that point, I mean, I can see why he would want to go back. Yeah. But it leads to this whole thing where he encounters the Scarecrow and mm-hmm. Ben Adler sees him and everything, and they end up having this kind of test where the scarecrow smashes his little robot doll and goes yeah. to attack him. What were you guys thinking at this point? Um, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I was like, what's yeah. like triggering this? And then do we find out that Ben is sort of triggering it a little? He can, can he can freeze it. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah, I was he like, has I like don't a really blocker. Understand what he's what he's I, he's sketchy to me. Yeah, he's I super sketch. Something he's super about sketch. the way he's acting, and I didn't know. I don't trust him. Yeah. The same thing though. I felt with Samantha. So I was like, is this a red herring? I don't know. Yeah, I think that though. I would thought that was really interesting. That was one of the first times I had seen Will interact with like a, a robot that. I, he had like an adult moment. I feel like where mm-hmm. he had to realize mm-hmm. like not all these robots are nice. Like y- th- this one might not be. When he lunged at him, I was like, uh, mm-hmm. do you hug him or do you do you run? Like what do you do? <laughs> you don't hug him. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that one. It's like Learn James, you will die. Do not do this. <laughs> don't be out here hugging these bots that are trying to murder well, you. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was really interesting to me to see this dynamic and to finally get you know when he's like. I, I was friends with this robot. Do you want to be friends? And ultimately learning this message, this kind of lesson that I'd love where he's like, we may never be friends. You may not even understand what I'm saying, right. but you don't deserve to be in a cage. Yeah. And yeah. this I thought was such a big, you know, topical, important message that he has too, that he's, you know, portraying of, hey, here are these these aliens that you may not be able to communicate with as easily as other people, but Nobody deserves to be isolated and put in this right. situation. So approach this creature with more compassion. Right. And then hopefully it'll pay off. Rough to have Maureen walk in at no. that moment, that learning moment, though. It's like, oh, Ben, you're about to get your ass in yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maureen went straight lioness on him. Who? Oh, you think you're going to do this to the side? <laughs> oh, you got what me all doing? the way. Duh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, she put it. She put it down on him. She let him know that this is not okay. Yeah, she was not feeling. It. I was yeah. like, he's about to add some new scars to that yep. collection of his yeah. that he's got. Mm-hmm. Like, like jeepers. A scar. Pa, pa. <laughs> she's so protective though, and I love that. Yeah, I just yeah. love that about her. I do. I do love that she's like super duper mama bear, but she also is able to understand. Okay, you do have this connection though, because she does bring him in to see the mm-hmm. the resolute technology. And this is when he sees this handprint, yeah. and he puts his hand up to it, and he gets the flash, and sees where the robot is. He's on the 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 landscape with the rocks that right. he saw, and then the bot puts his hands up and can feel him. Oh my god! I got I chills. I got chills in my body. Yeah, it was oh. cute. It was like, that was a good moment. So that was good. such a good moment. Yeah. It definitely was helpful because the only other time that I got serious chills was not so happy. It was when Smith, with her uh, plan here, gets the book back and then helps the poor man who was trying to lock her up for killing that little girl's dad. Man. I love how she got the book back, though. She was like... Um, if I'm going to be incarcerated, I'd like some reading material. And Penny just goes, go to the library. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was Shade. such a good line. Go to the library. I would have loved it, though, if Penny was like, I do have an extra copy of my book. Here, you can take mine. And yeah. she's like, no, not that copy. I need, <laughs> I need some help. Yeah. I need some help. <laughs> well, I really like Kill the me out here, man. Some notes in the margins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that is a rough scenario. And her just leaning in that moment. Because yeah. the, the chills moment when she's like, don't worry, you'll go in a coma first before the toxin reaches your brain. You work so hard, you need a nice nap. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. This, this so scary. Scary. And then she turns to the security camera and is like, I need help. I'm like, you did this. What are She's you talking so about? Kelp help, man. Yeah. Help. Ugh. Well, 
This was an intense it episode was. It and was. an emotional, emotional episode. Yeah, sure. A lot, a lot happened. What were your over, any overall last thoughts here? I'm just so excited. I love how we know where the robot is now. I think that's going to really yeah. propel us through the last, almost, I guess, half of the season. You know, like yeah. six left. It's like mm-hmm. we're almost halfway through. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and yeah, we'll get. I'll, I'll get into more with predictions. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think I like I like this episode for bringing it back full circle. Just because again, we have a bunch of new characters, so I'm excited. It's to actually see. full circle in another. Story. Yeah, it's, it's two now. It's a Venn <laughs> diagram. Two stars collapsing in each other. Um, I just I love this this new dynamic that we're getting, and and again this new power struggle between our old jobs and our isolated Jupiter ship. Now we're having to be with all these new people, so I'm really excited to see. It how that happens and what to expect and the struggle within that. So that's what I'm looking forward to. And I'm excited to see what you guys think is going to happen. What are some of your predictions? Guys, I don't trust so many people on this show. <laughs> After Buzz TV predictions. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, Ben, don't trust him. Nope. Don't know that I trust Samantha fully yet. I don't know. There's just something yeah. off. Sounds weird. I just, I don't know. Also, we saw the real Dr. Smith for a hot minute in like that cryo sleep type thing his cryo sleep and she yeah i want to know more about that yeah i'm a little bit like what he woke up for a moment right and Mm -hmm. then she put him back to sleep and like creepily walked out like a hobbit i'm like i don't know what you're doing yeah i want to know more about that whole situation i do too because i was like that was never explained why he was in cryo sleep like i didn't even know that i thought she just grabbed a random suit i didn't know that it was luckily somebody who was cryo sleeping Yeah, I want to know more. I'm, I'm excited to see more about that. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I think Smith, like, I mean, ultimately the Robinsons are the only ones now who can catch her. So I think that it's going to be her trying to tie up loose ends yeah. and trying to Get quiet the yeah. Robinsons. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. All I know is that I hope we see more of Debbie because I need more of that chicken. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so what for our special segment here, Captain or Space Waste, mm. who do you think was your captain? Who would you want to captain your ship this this episode? So, you know, I think Will is the obvious choice here, but I do want to give props to Penny as well because I thought that she was getting sort of lured into what Dr. Smith was saying, but she ended mm-hmm. up calling security, and I was like, good for you. Like, way to follow directions yeah. once in your life. So I was, like, very proud of her for taking that mature step and being like, I'm going to listen to more mean this one time. Um, worst, all of Don's coworkers. I'm like, you need to listen to yeah. him, even if he abandoned you guys. He was still your best mechanic. You should probably listen to him when he's talking about mechanic things. Yeah. yeah. We're not really having it. Yeah. I think for me, I'm going to go with the obvious choice. Uh, Captain Will. My little man Will. He is just stepping up and turning into a little Captain Crunch. I like that little <laughs> dude. He's dope. Um, and then Space Waste, our girl, Dr. Smith. You're just you're just out here causing problems and, and taking people's identity and, and putting people in comas with, with seek help. And I don't appreciate that. So, your space ways. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, I, I gotta go with Will. Definitely, 100%. Yeah. As my captain. I mean, he's holding it down. He's a little 12-year-old who's also not getting distracted by all those little groupies. <laughs> he's he does, like, yeah. oh, you're, you're being real creepy? Cool. I gotta go check on the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, I'm doing space stuff. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Um, but I gotta say, instead of Smith as my space waste, I gotta. Unfortunately, I hate to add insult to injury, but the uh, the her in- investigator who she killed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I'm like, man, she went into your system, she deleted all of your stuff, yeah. and then she kelped you. You're going to pick up this kelp. Like, don't. You know not to trust this woman. You're just picking it up. What's this? It's going to be what kills you, yeah. sir. And you should know better by now. Yeah. yeah. So space that's mine. That's space my waste. very intense space waste. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag space, space waste. Hey, and speaking of hashtags, where can everybody keep up with you guys on social media? Yes, you guys can find me on Twitter at alphabet underscore Ann and on Instagram at Taylor underscore Gates underscore. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Terrell James Maple. You guys can find me on Twitter at Elena Jordan and on Instagram at Elena J. Jordan. And you can also check me out at relativitypodcast.com. It's a space scripted podcast. It's really cool. You should check it out. It's got a lot of stuff to show has, cryo sleep and whatnot. Uh, and then you can also catch me every week on MEA Worldwide. That's MEA WW interviewing your favorite celebrities. Till next time. Bye. We'll see you guys Yay. later. Bye. I love Our way. founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. 
Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.